Welcome everyone to the global conference on commemorating past genocide and learning to prevent atrocity crimes. The title of today's session is Bangladesh Genocide and Memorialization. Dear viewers, today we have three panel in this session and we are lucky to have the panelist as Professor Dr. Muntasir Mamun, along with Dr. Shahid Kadir Choudhury, Dr. Impiaz Ahmed, and Asif Munir. Before our main session, I would like to request each panel to speak 15 minutes on their topic, as at the end, we have a question answer session. Now, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muntasir Mamun, along with Dr. Shahid Kadir Choudhury. Dear viewers, Professor Dr. Muntasir Mamun, all in one, is a writer, scholar, historian, and professor at University of Dhaka. Professor Dr. Muntasir Mamun, I would like to request, sir, to discuss about Bangladesh genocide and memorialization. Thank you very much. Uh, the name of our museum is 1971, Genocide, Torture, Archive and Museum. And uh, it's a civil society initiative. There may be a question is that there is a liberation war in a liberation war museum in Bangladesh. So why did we establish a genocide museum? Because we think the main feature of our liberation war is genocide and torture. The genocide and torture carried out by the Pakistani army and their Bengali collaborators during the liberation war of Bangladesh in 1971 can hardly be compared with any other atrocities or genocide in the whole world. You see, after Second World War also, such number of people never been killed together nowhere in the world but Bangladesh just within nine months in 1971. In just nine months, the Pakistan army killed 3 million people and raped almost 5 million women. Um, recently, we are doing a survey from the Genocide Museum in 64 districts of Bangladesh. We have completed 30 districts. We are doing the survey on genocide, genocidal incidents, mass grave, torture cell and killing fields. The numbers we are getting from this survey is staggering. And when we will be able to complete the 64 district, I think the number 3 billion, the number of martyrs will be more than 3 billion. Still, still Asif Munir is there. We can elaborate on this subject also. Still, Bangladesh has not yet been able to gain international recognition of the genocide of 1971 because it has been politicized. In 1971, almost all the superpowers, all the Islamic, so-called Islamic states, they supported genocide and torture of 1971. Only India and the then Soviet Union supported Bangladesh and the Eastern Bloc. So after the war, they, the superpowers, China, mainly China, America, and Pakistan, and Saudis, they wanted to ignore this genocide and brain because they thought then there will be a question of trial. Crime against, human, crime against humanity. So they avoided it. So in 
our internal politics also, the military rulers, they also tend to ignore the genocide torture thing because they were more allied with the perpetrators, Bengali perpetrators of 1971. So they emphasized on victory. Yes, victory is one of our main, is one of our feature, main feature of the liberation war. But I should say again, in our liberation war, genocide, torture matters. So in a sense, it's a political statement also that we had genocide and you can't ignore genocide in Bangladesh. We are the only one in South Asia, not in South Asia, I should include Southeast Asia also because in Nampen, there is a museum of genocide, but in Cambodia, it was a civil strife between the communist parties, a sort of civil war. Yes, that was genocide also done by the Pol Pot regime. But in Bangladesh, it was an independence war. The minority dominated the majority and tried to annihilate the majority. So we wanted to put emphasis on genocide and torture. Six years back, we established this genocide museum in Kulma, in, in the south of Bangladesh, outside Dhaka. Six years is nothing for a museum. It took 25 years for the Liberation War Museum to get a piece of land, build a museum. And it was also a civil society initiative. In both the cases, Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, helped us to build this museum. So I say six years is nothing for a museum. We have started it. Visitors are coming from inside the country, outside the country. We have established also a research center under distrust and we have published almost 150 years. Give a clear picture of this museum and its activities. I will now request Dr. Chaudhary Shwait Padir. He is a, he is not only a trustee, he is also a trustee, member trustee of this genocide museum. I will now request Dr. Chaudhary to present a PowerPoint presentation in this virtual conference. Thank you. Is uh, Dr. Chaudhary is there? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. He's with us. Yes. Please, uh, please request him to give a power present, PowerPoint presentation yes, of our sir. museum. Yes, sir. Dear viewers, now I would like to request Dr. Shahid Kadir Chaudhary, Associate Professor, Jagunath University, to present a slide. Sir, uh, am I audible? Shahid, Dr. Shahid Kadir Chaudhary. Sir, am I audible? I think it's not good at getting the audio. Okay. Uh, sir, so, there... So yes, I, sir. Uh, please, I will request uh, uh, Asif Munir to continue. If he gets the yes, video okay, link, sir. then uh, uh, audio sir, link. Yeah. Sir, I think, uh, sir, get us. Uh, he is sharing the screen. I see. Okay. What's the problem?
ci ur ko hor ko kono fe Please ask him to say the slide. Yeah. Just please just wait a minute for Naha because he's not getting the net. So he will just show yes, the sir. slide. It's okay, sir. Okay, yes, okay, sir. Fine. Okay, bolo ye Actor par actor dekhi jate. Tik tik kuch shobai nahi. Hey, can you? To be slide bully, that's how. Ha, tomorrow Shonad door can't. To be actor, to be slide, that's how. Shesh, to be thank you. Bolo, that's only how. Hey. What's his name, by the way? Who will be presenting this hey. share screen? Ash, Dr. Shahid Kadhi Choudhury. I think he's assistant, right? That yes, yes. What's What's his yes. name? Shahid Kadhi Choudhury, Mr. Ramon. She is. Shahid yeah, Kadir Chaudhuri is already uh, sharing the screen for a few, um, okay. within a minute, I think. There is a li little bit technical problem. So, All right. yeah. Sir, uh, I think uh, 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 Mr. Yes, Asif Muni should continue. And if he gets the uh, audio link, then he'll join us. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, dear viewers, now I would like to okay, request. Now I would like to request our next panelist, Mr. Asif Munir. Before that, I would like to give a brief introduction about him. Mr. Asif Munir is a human rights activist of Bangladesh and National Program Officer at International Organization of Migration. Today, Mr. Asif Munil will discuss about the topic of role of Projonmo 71 in the post-conflict of Bangladesh. Now, the floor is yours. Please welcome Mr. Asif Munir. Thank you very much and uh, good morning, afternoon, evening uh, to all the audience and listeners from wherever you are in the world. Um, as introduced, uh, Projunmo 71. Projunmo is a Bengali term. It means generation. Uh, we are, like myself and many others, we are the children of the martyrs of the liberation war of Bangladesh. And uh, back in early 90s, we formed an organization called Projunmo Ekattur. Ekattur is 71 and Projunmo is generation. Uh, and basically, we grew up um, in, a, in a personal void as well as a void within the uh, national sphere in terms of uh, understanding the significance of the liberation war, but also holding back to the memories and memorialization of the particular war. And war is also a culmination of a movement from the uh, early 50s, late 40s, uh, which culminated into the war and then uh, the liberation and the independence and the victory in, in December. So with this particular stage of the history, uh, since the 70s and 80s, as children of the martyrs, we directly saw that uh, at different times, the country went through different kind of political changes, but also uh, through different changes of understanding and uh, recording, documenting the history uh, of that particular movement of the Liberation War. Um, many of us are direct uh, families of martyrs, and it uh, always is very painful to see how uh, things are forgotten or misled uh, for merry political gains. Um, so this happened mostly in the 70s, but many of us were very young at that time. Um, some of our brothers had participated, older brothers had participated in the war. 
but many of us were still very young in the 70s and 80s, but enough to understand that uh, the history and the preservation of that history uh, was not right, because many of us um, are direct testimonies of that history. And people did not come to us, or even if they did, it distorted what uh, was said, and so on and so forth. Um, so in the early 90s, some of us were uh, university students at the time, and a few of us felt that as children of these martyrs, uh, we could come together first to uh, just kind of build a network among ourselves, to be there as family members, but also contribute in the preservation of history as well as uh, for the newer generation, for the younger generation um, in Bangladesh or Bangladesh is going or growing abroad, uh, pass the uh, candle, the, the light of the history, the, uh, the spirit and the understanding of the liberation war to our own understanding. So that's how we came about as an organization. Initially, we felt that we could come together as a group, but gradually we formed an organization. As an organization, we did not have a very large formal membership, but in spirit, it, it's kind of more like an iconic representation where we felt that we can play a role of a catalyst. And since the 90s, when we had a democratic movement in 1990 after the autocratic ruler, uh, in the democratic process, as an organization, we try to contribute. One of the contribution, uh, or with many others we tried, is the trial of the war criminals. But at the same time, we also wanted to look at how we can start preserving the history and uh, start looking at symbols. So one of them, and I'll just quickly uh, share a presentation for, um, for our viewers as I go along. It's part of the uh, talk that I will carry on. Just give me one second to start the slide. So, um, so what we started to do was that uh, as one of the uh, symbols, we started to visit one of the sites where many of our parents were uh, supposedly uh, killed. I mean, there are proof that they were uh, brutally killed. Uh, so one of the killing fields and a memorial uh, that came about. Um, so, and that's called Rair Bazaar. So it's in the outskirts of the Dhaka city. And uh, like my parents, my father, and uh, many parents like ours, our parents were uh, killed and left in this particular place. This is an international image from uh, the media. And as we started as an organization, we felt that the time that we were living in, in the early 90s, did really speak the ideals and the spirit of the liberation war. So we used some of the images, which are actually the images of our parents. If you see the poster on the right, this, is, this actually includes parents of some of the people we know. And even though it was heartbreaking to use these pictures in the poster, we did have informed consent and we felt that we need to hit the society hard as the direct survivors of these families of the war. That does the country hold the history? Does the country remember why the fight was on and why our parents were killed? Which included the justice, seeking justice as well uh, for the uh, war criminals and, you know, going with the trial of the war criminals. Also, also the ideas that our parents stood for and the very reason that they were killed like this. Um, so back in early 90s, uh, and you can see this is a group of picture, a group of people uh, like myself. I myself, I'm in this group. We were in our 20s. And we actually went to the site of that particular place. It was traumatic. But we felt that since there wasn't any national initiative, uh, now there is, but at that time there wasn't such an initiative. And this was one of the uh, very iconic places that people knew about, but it was forgotten. 
So we went there, we talked to people uh, or survivors or people who lived in that area in uh, 1971 who saw what was happening and identified a particular place where we felt that this is the place where uh, it's a brick, it used to be a brick field. And beyond that, it's the end of the city, one part of the city of Dhaka city. We kind of identified that this is the place. This is the place where uh, our fathers have been killed. Many have been identified, many have not been. My father was never identified. We think that he was probably buried here or he was just lying here, but never found his body. And many parent fathers like ours. So we came together to identify this place and set up a mini memorial. So with just small bricks. And this was around 1992. We started to identify one or two other places at the time as well. There's another place in, uh, in Dhaka called in Mirpur, it was called Jalladkhana, which were also uh, a killing field it was later identified as well. But we started to look at where are these places in and around Dhaka city, very near us. And of course, there were many killing fields and burial grounds all over the country. We wanted to start the process. And um, there were other initiatives, of course. So I'm not saying that ours was the only one, but uh, it was a difficult time. We were doing this at a time when the political forces, the political leadership was not very pro uh, the liberation war. And they were involved in distorting the history. Even the particular site that we identified was there was an attempt to actually relocate it uh, by the authorities, but we never let that happen. And now where the memorial stands, the Raya Bazaar Memorial is the place where we had kind of authenticated that this is the place. Uh, even at that time, the leader of the opposition, the current uh, prime minister of Bangladesh, with her party, they had recognized that this is the place because they had their own context to identify that this is the place. This is again back in the 1990s. A former president, Zul Rahman, is also um, in the picture uh, behind and uh, other leaders of uh, the Awami League. Uh, at the time, they were in the opposition. And we had found this particular place to voice our uh, protests, voice our concerns as we go along. So through the 90s to 2000 and beyond, we uh, gathered around that place on particular days, national days, and there are more people there, and tried to bring out the issues that is related to the liberation war or what we felt the nation should consider or uh, you know, be warned about. So we would gather there with big banners and actually uh, stay there, uh, talk to the media, and felt that even if this is a small step, it's a particular day, thousands of people do come to this place. And if it makes some kind of uh, thought process in their mind, uh, still th that's very useful. And for instance, at different times in history, this was in, before one of the parliamentary elections. And because we have seen the history that um, many uh, anti-liberation forces, some of the people who were directly involved in the killing of our parents, were actually uh, in the government and it cannot be any more shameful than that. So we did not want that to be repeated. So before the elections on a particular national day, we stood there with this banner. We don't want any national representation, state representation by anti-liberation forces. We used other venues of protests as well, symbolic place of Shahid Minar, the place which is commemorating the language movement, again in Dhaka. And Could you please uh, put the mic on silent, please? Thank you. So we use both languages because we felt that we need to uh, get this message across, not just within the country, to others as well, to policymakers, to everybody and use this form of human chains, banners and protests on significant moments in, in the history of Bangladesh. So we, as the children of, uh, of the martyrs, felt that in, within our minimum role, we could play maybe a, a small part as a catalyst uh, in the ideals of the liberation war. So one of the ideas is about secularism, about 
the fundamental rights of all human beings, of all religions. So whenever we saw that there are, uh, you know, uh, atrocities against minorities in Bangladesh, we stood up, we uh, came forward onto the streets and talking that this is what our uh, fathers have been talking about. We need to come together and have a, a sort of a coming together of all religions and respect uh, people from all religions. Uh, and again, using that particular venue of Rai Bazaar and where I uh, come to sort of the, uh, the final statement of, of for this is that in this uh, uh, sort of catalytic force, for instance, in 2013, to demand the trial of the war criminals, there was a movement which, is, which was known as the Shabag movement uh, of young people uh, wanting justice. And uh, alongside us, the children and families of the martyrs. So it was the whole nation coming together in certain places in Dhaka, but this spread all over the country as well. But again, taking Raya Bazaar, the particular memorial site, uh, a symbol which could be used and brought back again and again in people's memory because of the brutality and the symbol of that particular genocide happened all over the country, starting from the 25th March. Using that particular place, we the children came back again and again to this particular venue and try to raise the of the country, rekindling the memory and trying to establish what is right. And again, that symbol has been used and taken forward by many others. The last particular image is uh, by a filmmaker who's standing in the middle in the blue t-shirt. Uh, who is, has actually made a film on the different uh, killing fields uh, of Bangladesh from the Liberation War and trying to gather that history. So one of the sites that he chose was the Royal Bazaar Memorial. And uh, we were there at the beginning of this uh, place. So not just through these sites, what we try to do as Junma Kattur, as this organization, is talk to young people, young uh, People who are studying in the universities now, in schools and colleges, and trying to uh, get them the message across, but also tell our own stories, stories that we know from our families, um, our parents, our living parents, or our siblings, and telling them about um, what went on, what went right, and what went wrong, and why we're proud of our parents and the history of the liberation war, and why uh, justice is needed for the war crimes, why uh, genocide needs to be recognized. The Bangladesh genocide, because of a lot of the international politics, has not always been recognized or came to the limelight. So we do our own role, um, and many of us also from the Children of the Martyrs, uh, we are also now spread across uh, in other countries as well. So we try to uh, bring this issue forward wherever we are, so that we can uh, particularly all those accountable for that war, but also for the next generations uh, live with that spirit of the liberation war. Uh, I think I'll stop there because uh, I've covered most of the things that I wanted to say. Thank you very much. And thanks for the opportunity uh, for me to speak here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your wonderful thoughts and let us know the role of Prozunmo Akatur, as well as also thank you for sharing with us so many iconic memories. Now, dear viewers, I would like to request Professor Dr. Muntasir Mahun, sir, uh, for sharing the presentation, if it's possible right now. Sir, uh, you you are muted. Yes, sir. And I think, sir, I think we could connect him. Yes, sir. Now you are audible. Yeah. I think I don't have to uh, uh, dad it because things are there. Yes. Just sir. show it. Yes. Just slowly show it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
এখানে শোনা ইয়ে হয়ে গেছে একটু আরেকটু এদিকে আসতে হবে এটা অর্ধেকটা ঢেকে গেছে আমাদের একটু দেখা যাচ্ছে না ঠিক করে হ্যাঁ এনিওয়ে I think uh, Lutfun Nahar, yes, uh, sir. the technical glitch, I think okay. you can't go it's through okay, it. Sir. Yes, sir. It's okay, sir. Uh, we can see the presentation perfectly, sir. I think it's okay. This is from a uh, technical team reporting. The presentation is seems all right. And we don't really found any difficulties to uh, see that presentation. I hope this is all okay from our end. Thank you, yes, Professor thank you. Dr. Huntasir Maun, sir, <laughs> for sharing okay, this presentation. It's a very poor one. Sorry for that. Yeah. No, sir. I think uh, the viewers definitely enjoy this. Dear viewers uh, and respected uh, panelists, unfortunately, we couldn't be able to connect our another panelist, Mr. Oh. Imtiaz Ahmed. Uh, before we are moving to the question and answer session, now uh, we can see that among us, we have Mr. Mofi Bilhaq, trustee, Liberation War Museum and Director Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice. So now I would like to request Mr. Mofidul Haq for his few words. Uh, well, uh, I would like to express our profound thanks to good friend of Liberation War Museum, Professor Muntasir Mamun, and uh, his colleague, uh, Dr. Choudhury Shahid uh, Sadir. And uh, they actually arrived from India this uh, noon and then rushed to make the uh, presentation and participate in the very important global webinar. And I think this has added a color to the whole effort that we have launched with participation from both national and international scholars, activists, uh, and uh, this is very important in a sense that the discussion that is uh, that is going through and also from the early morning one important aspect has always been highlighted that the role of memory and also the erasing the memory which is also one of the major aim of the perpetrators and in bangladesh history is a contested space as well as memory and we have seen that how state after the brutal killing of father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, those who have usurped power, they 
one of the main agenda was for the distortion of history, denial of history, and also denial of memory. And during that dark era, it is the people actually who has kept the flame of memory alive. And that was reflected in many different ways in our uh, national perspective. And I think today it is very interesting to listen to the presentation by Asif Munir. He represents the intergenerational struggle of memory as the children of the martyrs who have uh, very little memory of the, those days and brutalities, but they are carrying the trauma. They are carrying the uh, brutality which uh, happened to their, uh, in their family and with their nearest and dearest one and also all around the country. And so upkeeping the memory is a very important uh, struggle. And Professor Muntasir Mamun is a long procedure in this regard. And uh, through his books, uh, his research, and uh, the way he inspired also his students and new generation members, that's uh, also made a major contribution in the memorialization process in terms of documentation and also analyzing the past. And then in 2014, he took the initiative to establish a torture and genocide archive and museum in Kulna, uh, the uh, <coughs> southeastern part of Bangladesh. And it is also very important that uh, the atrocities happen all over the country. And memorialization has to be also spread all over the country in many different ways. But in Kulna, it has taken a major shape and now is contributing strongly in the whole process, especially in the documentation, which uh, I think in the slides, you got a glimpse of it. And you can see that a lot of activities are going on around the uh, genocide and torture and genocide archive and museum in Kulna. And uh, this is also very important that uh, the museum has good contact in the uh, subcontinent in the region with and with their connectivity, they also has taken the initiative to have a memorial in Tripura, which is very significant in a sense that in 1971, the neighboring states of India has played a very important role. And I think it is on behalf of the nation that he has taken the initiative and then Tripura with the help of the local people and the local government, and especially with the strong participation of the artist group, they have actually successfully build up a garden and complex dedicated to the friendship and to the war of liberation of Bangladesh. So we will look into this uh, past history and the way to keep up, keep the flame alive and also to make the experience intergenerational and also learning from the past. I think that's the most important issue. And as Milan Kundera has said, and it is much quoted in Bangladesh, that the struggle of civilization is the struggle of memory against forgetfulness. And it is not only a struggle, it is also a battle. Because there are forces which do their best to wipe out the memory. But there are people who will never forget. And I think that is very much part of the never again that we want to say to genocide. So from Diversion or Museum, we are more than thankful to the two participants who have uh, highlighted two different aspects. And But most importantly, it is the most important uh, or the core philosophy behind this memorialization is that it is the society and the people who are the best safeguard for the memory and also for the preservation and not only for the preservation, but also for the presentation of the memory to the new generation. That's the most important part. And we are very happy to see that in Bangladesh, there are many, many initiatives like that. The Virgin Art Museum is part of that in a very humble way. And we feel inspired by what other people are doing in other places. So all the best wishes for both the panelists. And I think uh, we would like to follow with a discussion or whatever further contribution the panelists will make. Thank you all. 
thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your insightful thoughts. And thank you for joining with us. Now, uh, respected panelists, now we are heading to our question answer session. We can see there are few questions from the participants to our both panelists. And the first question is for Professor Muntasir Sar, our participant question. How could you evaluate the legal framework of the proposed liberation war denial prevention act? This question is to Professor Muntasir Sar. Sir, uh, you are muted. Technologically. No, thank okay. you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, Can I repeat, sir, a question? The question. Yeah, I have heard the question, you see. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Munir can help me. Four or five years back from Nirmul Committee, uh, we requested the Law Commission to frame a law so that if anybody denies genocide, like uh, that they could be punished, this sort of law is prevailing in 12 or 13 countries already. And the commission said they did it. But you see, the process is very cumbersome. The commission will frame the law or draft a law. If they will send it to the law ministry. Law ministry will then veto it. Then it will go to the cabinet. That mark, they will approve it, then it will go to the uh, parliamentary committee, they will approve it, then it will go to the parliament to become a law. I think this process has been halted, I don't know why. Um, once sir, I don't have anything more to add. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, whatever you have said, it's the same question for us also. Um, I mean, you're right, from some organizations like uh, committee there has been sort of an active move but uh, probably there needs to be a further push uh, to get the uh, law vetted and approved by the cabinet and go up to that level it hasn't as, so as far as i know they've sent it to the law commission has sent the draft to the law ministry but i don't know uh, what law ministry is doing okay thank you sir uh, i hope our participant get the answer now, our participant also asked a question to Asif, sir. What is your future plan of continuing the Projonmo Akatur platform in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, thank you. Um, in the last five to 10 years, we have had a little bit of a struggle in terms of our own uh, solving a little bit of our internal issues. Uh, but on the threshold of the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh, um, we want to look at the future uh, in two ways. One is, again, part of what we are discussing today, uh, preserving the memory. Um, unfortunately, many of our living parents are also uh, passing away. Uh, I have just lost my mother in the last few days, and many of uh, the wives of the martyrs, and in some cases, the husband of the martyrs, um, are either very old or are also uh, passing away. But to some extent, um, we, the children, also know some of these stories, direct stories of the liberation war. So documenting that in whatever form we can, whether uh, through documentaries or through uh, publications or even for the younger generation using the um, different online platforms, uh, and of having uh, more a digital archive of written material as well as photography. Uh, some of our family members, like uh, a daughter of one of the martyrs, Shaun Mahmood, she has started a digital archive on her father, uh, Altaf Mahmood, uh, who was a martyr as well. Uh, so kind of looking at preserving that through different forms, uh, the direct history of the martyrs from as family members but also together with different other platforms, um, continuing to uh, strengthen the uh, spirit of liberation war and look for uh, um, either new interpretations or the genuine interpretation of the spirit of the liberation war, taking that forward. 
But last but not the least, uh, we were very young in 1971. But now many of us are in our own, you know, in our 50s or older. So how to link with the younger generation? So as an organization, it still has that ideals of Generation 71, so post-71. Although we formed it as direct descendants of the martyrs, eventually we would, in the next five, 10 years or longer, we would uh, try to engage with young people. Like I said, that we already try to do that, not maybe always in a very structured form. We will try to link up with, uh, say many of the children of the martyrs have now their own children. So there is a hereditary uh, move of passing on the history uh, within the family. We'll try to see how this could be more institutionalized. And so that this goes uh, from generation to generation and beyond the families to the nation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we can see the participants have encouraged and they have a wish to join Ekaptur, Prajanmu Ekaptur. Therefore, this question actually came. So we, we can see there is another question for Dr. Mutasir Mamun, sir. Uh, the question is, in many countries, when their histories get distorted, what can be done? <laughs> you see, uh, distortion some way or other, you see, when uh, somebody comes to power, they try to control the history. As Bofidhuluk said, they are contesting for space. You see, we are giving all the facts. Suppose the Liberation War Museum, if you go to the Liberation War Museum, you can understand what was a liberation war. If you go to the Genocide Museum, you will see or you will know what genocide was, what torture was. So if you can understand these things, I think you will know the history. We can teach history, we can write about history, but it's for the people or for the younger generation to read it. They say, always they ask, uh, there is a distortion, what we're going to do, what can you do? You read, you read, you read, and you will know yourself, your country. That's the thing, you have to read. Wonderful answer, sir. I hope uh, our participant get the answer. I think uh, this is the last question or we can't take any more question. So I have another question for Asif, sir. There are so many places which are still not recognized in this regard. What are the role of civil society? I guess uh, he or she might want to ask that the places what are not recognized by the government as a historic places. So in this regard, what will be the role of civil society? Thank you. I'll first add a little bit to what you've just commented before about uh, many young people wanting to join with Prajun Makathur. As Prajun Makathur, as an organization, it's still by definition, children of the martyrs, but definitely we collaborate and we work with others uh, in the society. And many of us uh, love to talk to young people who want to know about our stories, about the history of our, uh, of our nation and uh, through different universities or private talks. So we are available and you're welcome to contact us through the Liberation War Museum. Also, we are available through social media networks. So uh, it's, uh, we would uh, love to do that. And with the question, I think, I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Musa Simamun is also here who has been involved in identifying different locations as well. I mean, there are already some civil society initiatives and you're to some extent right that there hasn't been a national government initiative as such nationwide. Local administration have sometimes identified whether, whether it's a field where, uh, you know, a battleground or a killing field or a burial ground. I would say that, you know, the question talks about civil society, but whoever is listening to this, seeing this, and we say this many times when we talk to different people, identify, know the history of your own village, where you grew up, where you lived, whole Bangladesh, 
has been a killing field, a place of history and very place of glory. It doesn't need an organization and, and the country. Of course, state has a role. Local people know very well what happened where. It is our own pride. These people are still living. People, young people who were maybe in their teenage in 1971, many of them are still alive and their memories are very sharp. So you need to go to your own place where you grew up or where you live. Ask people, identify and get your friends together or families together or your teachers together or any local club or an organization to create something small. So why did I mention that particular you know, brick um, with few bricks that what we set up at Riot Bazaar. Eventually that was a national initiative, but that was a small step that we took that has not been taken 20 years before that or in the 20 years before that. It had to be 1990s when some of us took that initiative. And similarly, things have happened in other places as well. One symbol of Shahid Minar the, uh, that is dedicated to the language movement. We see small replicas of that all over the country and now across the world in different cities there are small replicas in the local areas of that. So people need to, we all need to identify what is there locally, have pride in that and spread that story around. Not wait for the government, not from wait from civil society or other organizations. Thank you. I would just like to add. Yes, hey, uh, uh, sir. Uh, uh, the point is the Genocide Museum has identified 50 places uh, of mass grave genocidal incidents and the killing fields. And we have put plaque on 50 places in Panchagor, in Khulna, in Rashahi, in Dinajpur, and in Dhaka. So it was sort of a civil society initiative. But as Asif Munir pointed out, you see that if the younger people are not conscious and they don't participate or they don't identify things, so how will you proceed, you see? We, our generation is living, you see. In the corona, most of my friends have died. I don't know how we'll cope with it. But you see, there is a rule of the High Court that said these places should be preserved by the government. So if you know, if you can identify a place, you can tell the TNO or the UNO or the Union Council Chairman that this place should be preserved. It's a high court rule. And if they take initiative, as Asif Muni said, in the, we can uh, put plaques in the whole country. And I will say with him, don't wait for government initiative. Don't wait for establishments initiative. Try yourself. They have tried. We have tried. Mufidul have tried. So you have to try and try. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mam, sir, and Asmini, sir, for your valuable times. And those words, those historic words, going to be remarkable for the youngers as well as we really do appreciate your times and your discussion about Bangladesh genocide and memorialization. With this, with this, I would like to say there is the end of the session and thanks again, Professor Dr. Muntasir Mamun sir and Asit Muni sir and all other participants for being joined with us. Thank you, sir. And say joy Bangla.